Hi, and welcome to the MacGuffin Podcast. Uh, we're here for another one of our top fives. I'm Ed. And I'm Alan. And today we're going to talk about our top five summer movies. These are movies that happen during the summer, since the sun's out, finally. Yeah. In Seattle, the sun rarely comes out, so we decided to take advantage of it. So, <laughs> And maybe we should throw out just to the top that there were a few we just... That are cl- obvious ones like American Graffiti. We feel like we've talked about it a lot. So yeah, Days and Confused as well. Yeah, that one would definitely be so, long, but we've talked about it so much. So you know, save your hate mail, yeah. please. <laughs> um, I'll I'll start with my my number five. Uh, it's even got summer in the title. Five hundred days of summer. Yes. Which um, I that that movie is a lot of fun. It is. And um, uh, JGL, I think, is charming as hell in it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Same with Zoe Deschanel. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, despite you know how much Saturday Night Live has been making fun of her being quirky for quirky's sake. <laughs> and that uh, iPhone commercial. You ever seen that? That Siri commercial? Oh, yeah. Siri, is it raining? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, but still, I, I, I think if just, you know, if you strip away all the garbage surrounding it, the movie itself is really charming and sweet. And it's another one of those good where not... It, those relationship movies where... Not everything is destined to turn out per- perfect. Mm-hmm. It's you know it's about memory versus reality. It's about enjoying the moment as it lasts. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I really enjoyed that film. I really liked it. I love the uh, filmmaking aspects of it. How they kind of jumped around in different time frames. How it all of a sudden turned into a Swedish film, like an Ingmar Bergman film. How it turned into a a, a French New Wave film. Um, it was just one of those movies that There's just. A- could go in any direction. And My it was family's just so much fun. constantly quoting the line. I think it's like, "Honey, we have a Chinese family in our in our kitchen." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, All right. Uh, moving on to my number five uh, summer film. Uh, my number five is a movie that I was surprised that I enjoyed as much as I did. Uh, it's from 2009, written and directed by Mr. Greg Matola, and it is Adventureland. It's a very good uh, movie, starring Mr. Jesse Eisenberg as a recent graduate who doesn't get into the school that he thought he was going to get into so he takes this summer job working at this uh, theme park sort of six flags kind of a place and pretty much just spends his entire summer hanging out you know getting involved with the other people interacting with them developing friendships developing relationships and everything (laughs) and I thought it was going to be one of those kind of like silly, kind of goofy comedies, but it turned it's out to be much grounded. more than that. Yeah, it's yeah. very grounded, very subtle, uh, very sort of realistic in, in in the world that it's presenting. Um, good performances by Jesse Eisenberg and even Kristen Stewart. She, I think that's one of her better performances, to I be honest think, with you. I think if both Kristen Stewart and Ryan Gosling made more movies like that, mm-hmm. people would hate them less. <laughs> I mean, True. people. I mean, the general public loves them, but I'm talking about people who like kind of hate on them for various reasons. Mm-hmm. Ryan Gosling, less Green Lantern, more Adventureland. Yes, that's absolutely. <laughs> just more Adventureland. Ryan, did I say Gosling? Oh, sh- Reynolds. Sorry, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> sorry, I got my Ryan's confused. Please, please, please. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I think Gosling is going to be okay. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, Gosling's fine. He'll yeah. be staring at things for years to come. Yeah. Um, my number four is uh, uh, a movie from the 70s, uh, back when Al Pacino was something really exciting to watch, yeah. and that was Dog Day Afternoon. Yes. That movie, um, Summer's integral in it, in that, uh, you know, it's sweaty and grimy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's got, it, it, this is the movie uh, based on a, a, a true story about a guy who robbed a bank so he could finance his lover's uh, sex change operation. Um and it is terrific. Yeah, um, it's terrific. Uh, Charles Durning plays the uh, the head cop that's trying to talk Pacino's character out of uh, out of the bank without mm-hmm. you know where he's holding hostages. Um, uh, it's John Cazale, yeah. uh, you know one of his you know one of the too few performances. too few performances we ever got out of that mm-hmm. guy. Uh, it's it, it it was a terrific movie, you know, and give us the classic line: Attica, Attica, Attica. Mm-hmm. It's it's excellent, and the fact that they're all trapped in that bank and with the the heat and everything. Uh, I mean, there's a reason why Sidney Lumet decided to just show like city life for like the first three to five minutes, is because it was one of the hottest days of the year, and it just made it more intense. Yeah. So. Speaking of intense, let's move on to my number four. Uh, we're going to keep it in the classic realm. Uh, this is from 1951, and it is Eli Kazan's A Streetcar Named Desire. Which was also would have almost on my list. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Marlon Brando, Miss Kim Hunter, Miss Vivian Leigh. Uh, all taking place in, in the south in, in this uh, area where... 
things are grimy and, and dirty sweaty. and sweaty and uh, just the heat plays such an inter integral part in that film because it it enhances the sort of weirdness, the the oddity and, um, and the absurdity of, of the piece. And it's reflecting the passion that they're exactly. all they're all very passionate people. Exactly. And Vivian Leigh, who plays Blanche Dubois, yes. coming uh, to her sister uh, because she's kind of had a shady past and everything, and she's kind of unstable. And the torment that she receives from Marlon Brando, Stanley. Can't you hear me yell? <laughs> you it's know that I'm your fellow. Very very intense. Stella. Uh, very dark and the fact that the heat is there and so prevalent um, I mean there's that whole scene where Marlon Brando just takes off his shirt and he's all sweaty and everything yep. all up on Vivian Leigh <clears throat> it's just very very well done and one of those very hot movies yes totally totally perfect pick yeah. um, on to my number three uh, another classic from my childhood Stand By Me um, Yes. It, it I, again a, a group of great child actors. Yeah, we spend eighty percent of the movie just with those four kids. Um, it's of course you know if you haven't seen it yet, of course it's about four kids that hear about a dead body Remember and decide to go eight. go out for an overnight and go go find it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's mostly about their interaction. Uh, it gives the you know the the classic debates on who would win in a fight between Mighty Mouse and Superman, and of course it's. It's Superman because Mighty Mouse is a cartoon and Superman's a real guy. Mm -hmm. You know that's that's important stuff. Um, it, it's about growing up. Mm -hmm. It's you know it's about that last breath of childhood. Yeah. Uh, it's you know River Phoenix was Excellent. never better. No. Um, it, you know it talked about another too brief career, um, and you know a, a great a great directing job by Rob Reiner. It, yes. It's. Uh, if I, I'm stuttering, but I can't I say enough about it. Yeah, yeah I, so many I, things you want to say. I can beat this dead horse forever. It's a great movie. It's a great movie, yes. I no disagreement <clears> here. <throat> uh, moving on to my number three summer film. Uh, this time we're going to go in the comedy realm with 1980s Caddyshack, directed by Mr. Harold <laughs> Ramis. <laughs> Story of these <laughs> group of people I mean, I look all too much hanging like out in this golf club. <laughs> Uh, yes, there is the <laughs> the gopher, and um, I mean pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. Keep it going. For the film is just a bunch of comedians and stars at the time just doing their thing and having fun and making laughs, and it's all highlighted by Bill Murray as Carl Spackler and his quest to get rid of that Cinderella darn story. gopher. Yeah, it's it's, Cinderella it's story. awesome. Um, I actually saw this recently, uh, I think uh, earlier this year or late last year, and I have forgotten how funny this movie is. It's excellent. Uh, there is a, incidentally, and just as a, a side note, there is a great documentary that's about the making of Caddyshack. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen it, I saw it on, on TV, but I, I'm sure it's on video, where it's basically Harold Ramis giving long, it's like an hour and a half long, mm -hmm. about the chaos that ensued surrounding that film. Really? Most of them were really high when they, I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, big, you know. Rodney Dangerfield in particular. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, it, it, yeah, super funny movie. Yeah, and I mean, amongst all those comedies that came out in the 80s, uh, Animal House, National Lampoon's Vacation, uh, this is the one that I would choose as my favorite, so Caddyshack. Cool. Well, my number two, uh, another classic, Rear Window. Ah, yes. And that is because, uh, I mean, it's a great movie. It's probably it's amongst my favorite Hitchcocks. It might be my favorite, mm -hmm. but it's definitely the weather it informs that movie to no end. Jimmy, it's the story. If anybody doesn't know, still mm -hmm. Jimmy Stewart breaks his leg, is stuck uh, while he's healing in a wheelchair. So he's bored and he decides to look on, spy on his neighbors with a telescopic lens. Yeah, and he thinks he witnesses a murder. But what's great about this movie is it actually tells stories with just what you can see through Just your neighbor's ages. window. Yeah. And it tells complete stories. It tells like probably half a dozen full oh, stories. Full stories with like beginning, middle, and right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. You know, everything Mrs. Lonely Miss Lonely Hearts down in the base. Miss Torso. Yeah. yeah piano and the, guy, the yeah. piano guy. Yeah. Totally. And uh and uh but it's they're all have all their blinds and windows open because it's summer. That's pretty he's hot. up, he can't even sleep, and he's itchy. And he, at one point, he tries to shove a back scratcher down his leg because he just can't get that itch. Yeah. He's he's uncomfortable. It's you know, the the heat and the summer inform that movie. Um, 
it, it, it it's a part of m making it what it is. Oh yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be successful if it wasn't set in summer. I mean, could you imagine Rear Window being set like in the winter with everyone closing yeah. their doors and wow. shutting their blinds? Wow, look at all these people around the fireplace. <laughs> no, fascinating. Exactly. I mean, the fact people want to get out and have some fresh air. That's why those there's that couple that sleep um like on the balcony, right, or on, on the, balcony. the staircase or yeah. whatever, and. It, the, the heat and then brings they out close the, people the and... blinds. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Excellent choice. Excellent choice. Um, moving on to my number two, uh, with another Cine Lumet film. Uh, this is 1957's Twelve Angry Men, which was on my list, but I'm, I, I seeded it to you. Oh yeah. I, was... I mean, when we were thinking about making summer movies, this was the first film that I thought of. Uh, just twelve jurors. Stuck in the room. Only one of them doesn't sweat. <laughs> Only one of them doesn't sweat. <laughs> Although it seems like everyone does. Yeah. I mean, it's freaking... You can tell how hot it is in there. You see the pit stains and everything. Yeah. And <clears throat> the heat just amplifies the intensity in that room. As the film goes on, uh, their conversations and the kind of back and forth between Henry Fonda and, and Lee J. Cobb just reach, reaches a fe fever pitch. And the heat just amplifies it. Um... There's there's that famous technique that Cindy Lumet did where he changed the lens to make it appear like the walls are closing in on the jurors and that really kind of builds up the claustrophobic feeling um, matched up with the heat it's like wow that thing could have could explode it's like a pod boiler pretty much in there yeah I mean so. they you know they're they're sitting there the fan won't even work the fan won't even work exactly yeah. yeah and then I mean even when it rains outside and they open up the windows it gets it's muggy. humid yeah. yeah it gets muggy in there so yeah I yeah, one of my favorite movies of all time. Period. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Well, um, on to my number one, uh, and m might be familiar here, is Do the Right Thing. That's my number one, too. Yeah. That. Um, it, first of all, Spike Lee's best movie, hands down. Oh, easily. Yeah. Um, easily. And that movie is, it, it, uh, again, for anybody who doesn't know, it's pretty much a day in the life um in New York, mm -hmm. in a in, in a mostly black neighborhood, uh, uh, hottest but it, day of the year, hottest day of the year. Everybody's everybody's out. Everybody's the the reason everybody's out is because it's hot. Mm -hmm. And um, you know the the three guy three old guys on the corner even like it's too hot to f. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know, stupid is never too hot. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, everything it, it's a, that's another one where. Uh, ten tensions get to a boiling point because uh, of the oppressive heat and the uh, it, the environment reflects the, what the characters are oh, feeling. Absolutely, yeah. The heat totally amplifies it. It already has everybody on edge, mixed together with the racial tension that's already been going on in that town. It, I mean, it seems like the ending was inevitable in in that film. So. I, it's it's actually interesting. I reflect back to a long time ago when Siskel and Ebert did a special about summer great summer movies mm -hmm. and i uh i might have been before this i can't remember but they said one of the essential elements was they think the summer movie died when air conditioning was invented <laughs> because people are out and have you know like have windows open and interact because sure. they're too damn hot to be in their house exactly but once every but once air conditioning happened people rolled up their windows in their cars people rolled up you know closed, closed their up. houses yeah um and that, i think that's an interesting theory mm. It works in my mind right yeah. now, yeah, for sure. But, um, it, but I, I, you know, I, I it, people had air conditioning at, at the time to do the right thing, but nobody, nobody could afford it in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, yeah, uh, that, fantastic movie. Fantastic movie. It's all about being upset, being angry, uh, not being happy with the way things are, wanting to make a change but not knowing how to do it. Uh, you, they just wanted to lash out in that movie, and Spike Lee encompassed it perfectly. Got it. In Got the it. Film. It's good. So. Alrighty, well, uh, that's our top five. We had you know a lot more choices. For sure, Why don't you tell lot. us some of yours? Uh, you can uh, check us out at MacGuffinPodcast.com, and we'll see you next time. Peace.